I would like to welcome you all to the Library of Alexandria. And before giving my little small speech, I would like to invite Dr. Amgad El Gohari, the director, uh, the head of the library sector at the Library of Alexandria, to give his speech because he's very busy and he's going to open the other satellite meeting that's taking place at the Library of Alexandria. So, welcome, uh, Dr. Amgad. Okay, you can talk from here. Thank you, my dear colleague, Dr. Marwa Sah. Uh, good morning for all of you. It's our honor to have all of you here today, today at Bibliotheca Alexandria. And uh, on behalf of uh, Professor Dr. Mustafa al fakhri Director of the Library, I would like to welcome all of you and wish all of you a very good and enjoyable time here uh, today and tomorrow and the day after, I think, in Cairo. Uh, I would like to thank uh, my dear colleague, Dr. Marwa Sah, and all of the team uh, who already did work for many weeks to arrange for this uh, meeting. It's our pleasure to have all of you here. Uh, we have another satellite meeting, as you know, for disabled persons. Uh, I think we might uh, meet each other in some of the sessions. Uh, unfortunately, we were not able to have only one opening uh, session because of the theme is completely different. But we'd like you also to get benefit from the other people and would like them also to get benefit from your uh, uh, work here. Uh, I think the theme here is very important to have uh, to talk about the leadership uh, and the leaders, uh, future leaders in librarianship. It's a very important topic. Uh, to, to deal with. Uh, we are already concentrating here in Biblioteca Alexandrina about how to build uh, the new leaders uh, in the library, generally in the library, and especially in the library sectors. We are talking about the main skills that they should uh, have uh, to compete uh, in the near future, not only uh, for the Arab, but also for the Middle East. Uh, we are looking forward to uh, have your recommendations. We are looking forward to uh, hear from your skills, from your professional uh, uh, career. Uh, how would you actually uh, help us to build our new leaders here at Biblioteca Alexandrina? Thank you very much for all of you and wish you all uh, the best and enjoy your time. Unfortunately, I have to leave right now for the other satellite meeting and I think we're gonna meet uh, lunch time and also we have a dinner time today uh, in lovely uh, place uh, here at the Mediterranean Sea. And again, I would like to thank my dear colleague, Dr. Maro Sahn and her team for the effort they did uh, for the past four weeks to uh, organize this uh, meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dear IFLA Division 5 Chair, Mrs. Sueli Ferreira, dear uh, librarian from Africa, Asia, and Oceania, Latin America, and Caribbean, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I would like to welcome you all at the Library of Alexandria to attend the IFLA Division 5 satellite meeting entitled Leadership Roles in International Librarianship, How Can Information Professionals from Africa, Asia and Oceania and Latin America and the Caribbean be part of it? Uh, as you know, uh, we, or, or we are organizing this satellite meeting uh, before the IFLA attends that will take place in a few days in Greece. And we are happy that in Egypt, we are hosting three satellite meetings. As Dr. Amgad mentioned, that we at the Library of Alexandria are hosting two satellite meetings, one of them for Division 5, and the other one for the section of the special need. It takes place also in, in the library, but in another room. So I think you will have the opportunity to meet with them. And the third satellite meeting is hosted by the AUC in Cairo. And to be honest, I feel very happy today that Sueli, Dream, and mine came through because we were discussing 
and talking many times about this satellite meeting two years ago when we were attending the IFLA uh, Global Vision Workshop in Barcelona. And we said, why not we organize our satellite meeting together for something that con concern our region. So I'm really happy that it come true. And I would like to thank all the, the participant and give you some statistics. We have about 80 registration for our satellite meeting, 40 from Africa, 10 from Asia and Oceania, and 10 from Latin America and Caribbean, two from Europe and three from USA. So I'm really happy that not only the three regions are here, but the whole world are represented here today in our workshop. And also, I would like to take the opportunity to thank all the committee that worked together to make this satellite coming today, the academic committee, the logistic committee, and the communication committee, because they do a great effort for the last three months. The organizer of the satellite that I would like also uh, to mention and give them my appreciation, the three regions, the chair and the secretary and all the officers of the three regions from Africa, Asia and Oceania, and Latin America and the Caribbean, the IFLA management of the Library Association section that is also represented by our dear Hans Lotcher from Switzerland. He will be talking to us now. And the Library Education in Developing Countries Special Interest Group. Also, the, the partner who organized with us the Library of Alexandria, that I'm, be, I'm proud to be part of it. The Egyptian Association, the Egyptian Library Association, represented by Dr. Amenim Gehed, the president, is here with us. And the National Library of Archive of Egypt, they, they will host us in Cairo on the 22nd. And the main uh, motor or dynamo I have to salute it is Mrs. Sueli Ferrare for her great effort for doing this uh, dream came true. My special appreciation to our sponsors because we couldn't make it without your support. So we are really grateful for Emerald, for EBSCO, and for ACMEL for their great support. Thank you so much. I would like just to give you some logistics information. The, the, the event is organized on three days. The first one will be here, sessions. The second day, it will be workshop. We will be at the same room. And the third day, it will be a, Cairo, a trip in Cairo to visit the pyramids, the National Library, and the Islamic Museum. I couldn't ask you to come to Egypt for the first time without seeing and visit the pyramid. So we include this as part of our satellite program. And we will be delighted that you confirm your attendance because we have to confirm the bus today. So whoever want to join this Cairo trip, please sign in again or make sure that your name, your name is in the list. Uh, another logistics point, you have the Wi-Fi uh, free here, open inside the room. We have already put the password. Maybe we will put it again. If you want to be connected on the Wi-Fi of the library, you can use the username and password. Another good news that our event today is recorded and webcast online. So all people, if you uh, can uh, share the link with your colleagues, with your friends, on your page on Facebook to share with them, they can follow us and they can attend online our webcasts. It's available on the library website, webcast. Yes, Engineer Asma, there is any special link? No? Only the Biblioteca Alexandrina and then go to the webcast. They will find and they can click and they can attend with us the full day. OK, thank you so much. And I will give uh, the, the floor to Mrs. Sueli Ferreira to give her talk. Morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say for Dr. Professor Dr. Mustafa Fekir that he's not here, unfortunately, but thank you for the you know, director of the Bibliotheca Alexandria. Thank you for supporting us here. Also for those, Amrat El Goham, 
it's so complicated for us the name. I'm so sorry. <laughs> the head of the library sector of the Biblioteca Alexandrina, uh, Mara Elsa, director, director of the Center of Francophonie Activities here in the Biblioteca Alexandrina, uh, Hans Ulrich Locker, secretary of the IFLA Management of Library of Association uh, Association section, and our first keynote speaker. Uh, also, Clara Shu, our second keynote speaker and director of the Montessori Center for International Library Program United, from the United States. Shok M. Salan, representative from IFLA Library Information Science Education in Developing Countries, a special interest group. Also, Khaled, Khaled El Halabi Arab from Arabic Federation of for Libraries and Information, AFLIA president. Uh, Hezhan Azmi, the National Library and Archives Director. Nata Tambi Kisokani, Africa Section Secretary. Uh, Tao Yang, Asia and Oceania Section. And Maria Talavera, from Latin America and the Caribbean Section Chair. Perhaps everyone can know her. Latin America and Africa and Asia, please. It's, yes, Tina. Uh, also, Lindy Inicente Nablo. She's from IFLA Regional Office for Africa. Okay, and all of them and dear colleagues here and also those that are following us by internet. Welcome. I bring you grades from IFLA President, IFLA Governing Board, and IFLA General Secretary and welcome you to the Division 5 satellite. It's an honor and a huge pleasure for us to be here today in this beautiful and historical Biblioteca Alexandrina for two days, today and tomorrow, August 20 and 21, 2019. The IFLA Division 5, the regions which include regional sections of Africa, Asia and Oceania, Latin America and Caribbean, jointly organizing the satellite meeting and with management of library association sections and the library and information science education for developing countries, a special interest group, as a prep conference of the H50 World Library and Information Conference of IFLA. The satellite aims to get input and new ideas to increase the participation of professionals from the Division 5 regions in in all IFLA sections, standing committee, and other strategic functions. Uh, our purpose is to discuss and understand the presence, participation, contribution, and impact of those regions, Africa, Asia, and Oceania, Latin America, and Caribbean professionals in the library and information science field at international level, more, more precisely at IFLA, or uh, to understand measure and analyze the environment of the participation of your professionals from those regions in the strategic position and make sure national and at international national regional associations to make sure that the culture vision characters needs from those regions will be better understood and consideration and our decision make levels and process and then it was open to all professionals with the interest to participate in the dis discussion about leadership roles in international library from those regions. And the focus uh, was and are in three, on three aspects. Educational focus, and then you have some questions. How to prepare new professionals to have a strong international presence? How to motivate them to be more proactive at all international uh, federation, but especially at IFLA stand committees. Uh, from the, uh, uh, the second aspect, associative profile, advocacy and leadership. And my, our question are, how can the National Libraries Association help to increase the participation at international levels? What are their roles? And the last focus is professional opportunity. Uh, what difficult problems, obstacles, and or barriers are facing those professionals to participate at the international level? Is it possible to identify ways to help them to solve some cultural, bureaucratic, and or economic problems to be more involved at international levels? 
Is it possible to create some kind of platform or something to register ideas, proposal, sponsor, and so on to help the library information science professionals from those regions to participate at international level, especially at IFLA? So today, we, have, we do have here representation from all regions of the world, Africa, Asia, Oceania, Latin America, Caribbean, Europe, Europe, and North America. So welcome to professionals from at least 23 countries. Australia, Brazil, Chile, China, Egypt, Ethiopia, India, Iraq, Japan, Malaysia, Mexico, my, my, Myanmar, uh, New Zealand, Nigeria, Peru, Trinidad and Tobago, Tunisia, Spain, Singapore, South Africa, Switzerland, United States, and Zimbabwe. Did I forget someone? I hope Who's not. The flag on here, Aram? Yes, can you see? It's beautiful. Okay, and then uh, I'm not going to talk about the program. Mara already said that you have just two full days. A very busy day and very beautiful day. And then so thank you for all of you to be here with us today. Thanks to all members of the Biblioteca Alexandria for their support and hard work to prepare all this. Especially thank you, Mara Elsa, my colleague from the Government Board, IFLA also. Thanks to the academic, logistic, and communication community of the satellite. Thanks to all standing committee members of IFLA, like IFLA regions sections. And of course, I would like to thank you, our sponsor, Emerald, that have been supporting the IFLA Division 5 activities at IFLA World Library and Information Congress, I think for more, for more than two decades. I think so. I hope so, two dec decades more. And I hope all of you are great two days of work and enjoy the visit to this wonderful country. Thank you. Thank you, Sueli, for your nice introduction. And mm -hmm. I would like to invite Dr. Hans Orlach Lotcher from Switzerland mm -hmm. and give you some uh, information about him. He is. He got his diploma in journalism from the School of Journalism in Munich, and then he received his Master in Science and Communication Management from the University of California in Los Angeles. In addition, he holds a doctorate in Human Rights, Communication, and Living Globe. His professional career started in 1976 when he used to be a journalist and editor for newspaper, radio, and television. He proceeded then to manage num numerous organizations such as communication agency, HALO. Mm -hmm. Is that pronounced like that? Yeah. In 2008, he became a member of the Board Library Information in Switzerland until, and then in 2011, he became its director. And since 2019, Dr. Lotcher is the executive director of the Biblio Swiss and the Swiss Library Association. So we are very happy to have our first keynote speech from Switzerland as an example for us, for our region. Thank you. Dear colleagues, I'm looking forward to present you some ideas to develop uh, and improve your own association based on my own experience in Switzerland and my knowledge. Thanks for the invitation to Sueli Maria Ferreira for this uh, satellite meeting. Management of Library Association Section MLAS has an interest to support this satellite meeting from Division 5. Because MLAS is the core of the EFLA, it's central for the work of EFLA because EFLA is the federation of associations. I hope you all are individual members of IFLA, you could be, but most important is that your association is member of IFLA. Why? That is in my title. Mm -hmm. Because a powerful national association is a prerequisite for an international leadership role.
I give you a short overview of my presentation. We will start with an action. You will start with an action. And you see there is my colleague, which is, as, her, as I know, looking by television and online streaming in my office in Switzerland. You will be a little bit shocked like her that you have to do something, but it's not uh, painful, I will assure you. Then I give uh, four points, uh, four aspects of my presentation concerning the members of an association, the management board or governing board, the activities of an association, and finally the statutes. That is your action now. You have to find a question for yourself. What do I want to know after this presentation? Or what question do I have about international development? What can I do to strengthen our presence in the international field? Please, I invite you to note at least one question. I give you a minute time for it. What makes an association effective? The question is very easy to answer. It doesn't take much. You will be surprised. I would like, uh, it just needs a little hard work to do. That's my answer. And now I would like to explain this question or this answer in more depth from the four points of view I have mentioned. First, the members. An association is based on memberships. In other words, libraries or library employees who decide to become members and contribute to it. This can be financial support or personal resources. For example, providing work time. That sounds banal, but it's central. How do you get members? That's the question. By addressing them. Best of all, you should do it personally, at events, at congresses, at meetings, or by advising systematically via websites, flyers, and mailings. But that need more effort than personally speak with people to convince them to become members. Then you must register them. This can be a simple Excel file or a database. You must record the members, register as the word says. The addresses today, especially the mail address, are the engine of an association. That sounds quite simple, but I can assure you, this is not easy. If you're just trying to keep these addresses up to date, you've got a lot of work to do. For example, finding out who has taken over the management of a library association or a library, or where a person lives or works after relocation. The addresses are the capital of an association. They are the engine that makes it possible for an association to organize itself. And the most important thing is that you have as many members as possible. The more members an association has, the more weightage it has, especially in social and political matters. After all, it's about the type of members. We, in Switzerland, have a single national association for all types of libraries since January 2019. We know also personal and institutional membership, individuals or libraries. This is not always easy, but the less fragmented the organization, the stronger it is. In many countries, there are different associations for these types of members or different types of libraries. I don't think this is an ideal solution, it's better to be united on the outside 
differentiate between different interests and concerns internally. Within the framework of sections and so on, as EFLA, for example, makes it exemplary. Lesson one, the members, you need people to support you, as many as possible. An association is an abstract construct, but it's shaped by people. The management board. Look for strong personalities, but also accept that they do not always agree. Worse it's, is only if they do not decide or decide nothing. The executive committee of the association has the central function as a management organ. You should therefore find people with leadership qualities. Leadership's ta leadership tasks are particular a strategy for work, to create the budget and to cal calculate costs, to recruit staff or the secretariat or find people for voluntary work. The association should at least cover their expenses. Do not pretend you have no money. To complain is not a successful attitude. You recognize immediately the activity of an association has nothing to do with librarians' work. It is a management task in order to create the basis for librarian activities. It is about management. The word consists of the Greek manus and agere, leading the hand or doing something concretely, acting. The task of leading an association can be compared with the management of a library. It is therefore advantageous to be able to recruit experienced leaders for the board of directors. It is particularly important from my experience that at least one person on the board has financial competence. In general, it is an advantage if you if your professional competence for the board, you have more experience there, which also comes from outside the library world. For example, communication, human resources, or in the field of education for continuing development. When we merged the public and academic library associations to form the single association Biblio Swiss, we were looking for a person who did not come from either of the two associations. They should be unbiased and not be assigned to any former association. Due to his former function, the new president has a large network for national and federal education and cultural policy. This is currently an invaluable advantage in political negotiations on copyright. At the same time, this strengthens the positioning of the libraries and our association. In general, the world of libraries is very restrained politically worldwide, which makes it difficult to influence political processes. This is because libraries should be as neutral as possible. But without politics, mm -hmm. the representation of interests does not work really successful. Finally, a board of directors should represent the library world in terms of library types and the regions of your country. Sometimes in our case, the languages who are spoken, which are spoken in Switzerland. At the same time, it should not be too large. You recognize the composition of a board must meet many requirements. My advice in this context is actively approach suitable and competent candidates. It is not always easy to win over people who are already under pressure for this task. However, I have already experienced many members who have committed themselves in some way for their association. After their work, they all rave about the fact that nowhere have they learned so much about libraries 
as with this work for the association. That goes for me within EFLA in the same way. You can only profit from such engagement. Lesson two. The composition of a board should not be left to the fortune. Good candidacies are not easy to find, but it's worth the effort. In the long run, it's more successful to create a profile and bring together different competencies. The activities. You can do whatever you want. Unfortunately, many organizations do that. You act smarter when you define the work at the beginning and respect the slogan, less is more. At first, you must organize your own association. This includes, as I said, the collections of members and addresses and board members. You must also organize general assemblies, elect the governing board, prepare a budget and work, work out the finances, define and collect membership fees, seek state support, obtain any necessary permits, develop possible activities that lead to revenues. Only after you have ensured the administrative function of the association, you can tackle the actual task of the association. For this reason, I would also advise you to run only one national association, because this can optimize the administrative expenditure in relation to the work of the library association. The association's activities depend on various factors, governmental framework, financial and personal capacities, current needs of the members. These may include areas that I will cite them in brief. Basic education, continuing development, workplace learning, periodicals, standards, recommendations, rule and regulations for library work, ethical matters, statistics, and so on. Communication with members via newsletter, social media, website, events. Conferences, symposia, congresses for further education. Exchange of experience to build network. International contacts. Participation in congresses, workshop, and satellite meetings of EFLA. And this brings me to the core of this meeting here in Alexandria. How can we promote the, participa the participation of professionals from the continents of Africa, Asia, Oceania, Latin America, and the Caribbean within EFLA? My answer is strong, effective national associations are needed. Mm -hmm. With an association, it is much easier to finance the cost of travel and stay at conferences worldwide. In a globalized world, every national association must also have an interest in participating in the global development of librarianship. IFLA offers this opportunity to exchange experiences with worldwide contacts. You can benefit here and now from the existence of IFLA and carry the findings of this meeting to your countries. I am employed by the Swiss Association, which also finances my commitment to EFLA and this workshop. In the same way, many committed members of Division 5 have prepared this conference. They, also diverse, they all deserve a big round of applause at this point. Such commitment is not possible without a strong national association or appropriate institution as university or national libraries. An association also has the possibility to finance this, actively, uh, this activity through foundations or donations. The association is an independent authority to make a financial request and should also guarantee for the responsible use of donations. Lesson three, 
the activities, a strong association is the prerequisite to get involved internationally. It is easier for an association to obtain funds. Private applications are much more difficult. Now I come to the fourth point of the statutes. You see a picture from our first General Assembly which uh, decided about the uh, statutes of our own association. This brings me to the end and the little part of what I have to say and uh, preliminary remark. You know the joke about lawyers. One is standing in front of you. You ask two lawyers for their opinion on a subject. How many answers do you get? Many. At least three. Yeah. Right, more. I agree with you. OK, you know an association needs a legal framework. This framework regulates the functioning, structures, and the finance of an association. It is something like the constitution of a state. It forms the foundation, it regulates the membership, the elections, the responsibility, the organization of the association in the broad outlines. Statutes are also the legal basis to determine the contributions of the members and to regulate the responsibilities. The structure depends on national law. Therefore, it is best to involve someone with legal knowledge. Here too, it's evident that the board should have various competencies. A fundamental question is whether you can form an association at all. Many libraries are state, institute, state institutions or at least financed by public funds. This can mean restrictions for the foundation of an association. Human rights, however, include freedom of assembly. In other words, the right to assemble with like-minded people. This can also be librarians who want to discuss their professional questions together or pursue their common interests. Freedom of assembly is a human right. Like any human right, it is subject to restrictions by law. You therefore have not, no absolute right, but you also have the duty within the framework of the laws to stand up for this right, if it should be necessary. Without courageous people, there can be no human rights. And also, as libraries, we are an important element in this. We guarantee access to information, which is part of freedom of expression. We provide access to knowledge, and knowledge is power. In this sense, you should not only do the best for your country, but also create a strong association as a basis for international, for your international commitment. Now I hope that the question you noted at the beginning have been answered, otherwise this is the best point to start the discussion. Thank you. I can consider as a guideline for us to remind us with what we should do as a library association, budget-wise, activity-wise, presence-wise, but maybe we will have more time tomorrow to discuss according to our regions and our culture and our budget. It's not always the same. So I think tomorrow it will be more active and interactive to, to talk about it. Thank you so much.